By watching this video, you will learn about bronson lowrys acid-base theory, conjugate acid-base pairs, and how to predict a bronson lowry reaction. bronson lowry acids donate slash release H plus ions or hydrogen ions. So in a reaction, acids are considered proton donors, where H plus is the proton. Let's look at HCl dissociating into H2O. HCl is an acid, so it would donate its H plus ion to H2O, producing H3O, hydronium ion, and Cl minus. This reaction can also be written without the water, so we have HCl dissociating into H plus ions and Cl minus. H plus is basically the same as H3O. On the other hand, bases accept slash remove H plus ions. So in a reaction, bases are considered proton acceptors, where H plus is the proton. Let's look at a reaction between NH3 and H2O. NH3 is a base, and bases accept slash remove H+, so NH3 will take an H plus ion from H2O, and that will produce NH4 and OH-. Now, let's find the conjugate acid and base. HCl donates its H plus ion to H2O, producing H3O, so this is the conjugate acid, and Cl- must be the conjugate base from process of elimination. Whatever the acid produces is the conjugate acid. For this reaction, NH3 is the base because it accepts an H plus ion from H2O. However, if we look at it through H2O, H2O donates an H plus ion to NH3, so H2O is an acid. Whatever the acid produces is the conjugate acid. So when H2O donates its H plus ion to NH3, it produces NH4, so this is the conjugate acid, and that means OH- must be the conjugate base. H2O is an example from amphoretic substance since it can act as an acid or base depending on the reaction it is in. Let's do this question. Label the acid base conjugate acid and conjugate base and write the conjugate pairs. So we have SO3 2 minus reacting with H3O plus and that is producing HSO3 minus and H2O. To produce HSO3 minus, H3O must donate its H plus ion to SO3 2 minus. And that means H3O is the bronson lowry acid since it's donating its H plus ion. And that makes SO3 2 minus the bronson lowry base since it's accepting the H plus ion. Whatever the acid produces is the conjugate acid. So when H3O donates its H plus ion to SO3 2 minus, it produces HSO3 minus. So this is the conjugate acid. And that means H2O must be the conjugate base. To write conjugate pairs, put opposites together. So H3O plus is the acid. So its opposite is the conjugate base. So it will be H2O. SO3 2 minus is a base. So its opposite is the conjugate acid, HSO3 minus. Something to note is that the conjugate acid will always differ by an additional H plus ion. So HSO3 minus has an extra H plus ion compared to SO3 2 minus. And that means they will have an additional charge since H plus has a charge. On the other hand, a conjugate base will differ by one less H plus ion. So H2O has one less H plus ion than its conjugate pair, H3O. And that means it will have one less charge as well. Let's look at another example. CO3 2 minus reacts with H2O, producing HCO3 minus and OH minus. To produce HCO3 minus, H2O must donate its H plus ion to CO3 2 minus, and that means H2O is the bronson lowry acid since it's donating its H plus ion, and since HCO3 2 minus is accepting the H plus ion from H2O, it is the bronson lowry base. Whatever the acid produces is the conjugate acid. So when H2O donates its H plus ion to CO3 2 minus, it produces HCO3 minus. So this is the conjugate acid, and that means OH minus must be the conjugate base. Remember, to write conjugate pairs, opposites go together. So H2Os are acid, so its opposite is OH minus, the conjugate base. CO3 2 minus is the base, so its opposite is the conjugate acid, HCO3 minus. Remember that the conjugate acid differs by an additional H plus ion, and the conjugate base differs by one less H plus ion. Something else that we need to know is that strong acids and strong bases dissociate completely, meaning the reaction will have one arrow. So let's look at some examples. H2SO4 is a strong acid, so its dissociation reaction will have one arrow. And what this one arrow means is that it will dissociate 100%, dissociate completely into H plus ions and HSO4 minus ions. So whenever we have strong acids, they dissociate completely. So what we really have is H plus ions, or H3O plus ions, because H plus is the same thing, and its conjugate base ions. We know that H2SO4 is a strong acid by looking in the data booklet. All acids above H3O plus are strong acids. H2SO4 is above H3O plus, so it's a strong acid. Or another way you can remember it is that all strong acids 
have very large Ka values. We also need to remember that only group 1 and 2 hydroxides are strong bases. So KOH is a strong base because it has a hydroxide and K is in group 1 on the periodic table. Strong bases dissociation reaction will have one arrow. And what that one arrow means is that KOH dissociates completely or dissociates 100% into its ions. Let's look at the dissociation reaction for CaOH2. Will it have one arrow? Yes, it will have one arrow since CaOH2 is a strong base. It has a hydroxide and Ca is in group 2 on the periodic table. And what this one arrow means is that CaOH2 dissociates completely or dissociates 100% into 2OH- and Ca2+. Whenever we are given strong acids or strong bases, what we really will have are their ions in dissociated form. On the other hand, weak acids and weak bases dissociate partially, meaning the reaction will have two arrows. So the dissociation reaction of H3PO4 will have a double arrow since H3PO4 is a weak acid. We know H3PO4 is a weak acid because it is not present above H3O plus on the data booklet. What this double arrow means is that H3PO4 dissociates partially into H3O plus and H2PO4 minus ions. So we have a few of these ions and we will mostly have the initial amounts of H3PO4. Look at the dissociation reaction of NH3. We'll have a double arrow or one arrow. NH3 is a weak base, so we'll have a double arrow. And we know NH3 is a weak base because only group 1 and 2 hydroxides are strong bases. What this double arrow means is that NH3 dissociates partially into NH4 plus and OH minus ions. We have a few amount of these ions and we will mostly have the initial amounts of NH3. So whenever we are given weak bases or weak acids, we can just leave it as is because when dissociated, we will have a few amount of their ions. One last thing we may want to know is that conjugate pairs are opposites in strength. So we look at HCl, a strong acid, its conjugate pair Cl- will be a really weak conjugate base. The stronger bases are at the bottom and the weaker bases are at the top. If we look at OH-, the strongest base, its conjugate pair H2O will be the weakest acid available. The strength of conjugate pairs are opposites. Look at H2S, a weak acid, its conjugate pair will be a stronger conjugate base. Let's look at SO42-, this is a weak base. Its conjugate pair HSO4- minus will be a stronger conjugate acid. Remember that to write conjugate pairs opposites go together, so we can remember the strength of conjugate pairs as opposites as well. So if the acid or base is strong, the conjugate base and conjugate acid will be weak. If the acid and base is weak, the conjugate pair will be strong. Let's predict some bronson lowry acid base reactions. So what we need to do is write the net equation and predict whether products or reactants are favored at equilibrium for the following problems. Let's do the first one. Ammonia and sodium hydrogen carbonate are mixed in an aqueous solution. First, we need to write the species in dissociated form. Ammonia is NH3. NH3 is a weak base, so we leave it as is because weak bases dissociate partially, meaning after dissociation, we will mostly have NH3. NH3 will be aqueous, not gas, because it's in an aqueous solution. Sodium is Na. Hydrogen carbonate is HCl3 minus, so when we combine them, we get NaHCl. This is an ionic compound, so we can dissociate this into Na plus and HCl3 minus ions. Whenever there are aqueous states, water will also be a species. This is all the species we have. Next, we look in the data booklet for the strongest acid and strongest base based on the species we wrote. Strongest acids at the top, so let's go down until we find one of our species. We see HCl3- first, so this is our strongest acid out of our species. And now let's look for the strongest base. The strongest base is from OH- to the top. We see NH3 first, so this is our strongest base. And now we just write our reaction between our strongest acid and strongest base. So we have NH3 reacting with HCl3-, our strongest base and strongest acid from our species. HCl3- is our acid, so it donates its H plus ion to NH3, producing NH4+, and CO3 2 minus. However, there is another way to find the products. On your data booklet, it actually tells you the conjugate pair of the base and the conjugate pair of the acids, so you can just write the conjugate pairs on the product side. The conjugate pair for NH3 is NH4, and the conjugate pair of HCO3 minus is CO3 2 minus, and we can just write that on the product side. To determine whether products or reactants are favored, we need to compare the acid and base and see which is higher up in the table. 
NH3 is our base and is higher up than HCl3 minus our acid, so this reaction is reactant favored. I like to remember this alphabetically, so let's do the ABCs. A, B, A comes before B, so we have acids before bases. And A, B, C, D, F, G, J, 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 K, L, P, Q, R, so P comes before R, so we have products before reactants. If the acid is higher than the base, then the reaction is product favored. If the base is higher than the acid, then the reaction is reactant favored. Let's move on to the second problem. Acetic acid is added to a lithium cyanide solution. First, rewrite the species and dissociate if needed. Acetic acid is CH3COOH. This is a weak acid, so it dissociates partially, so we can leave it as CH3COOH, because after dissociation, we will mostly have CH3COOH. Lithium is Li. Cyanide is Cn-. Combined, we get LiCn. This is ionic compound, so we can dissociate this, and we get Li plus and Cn minus ions. We have aqueous states, so water will also be a species. This is all the species we have, so now we go to the data booklet and look for the strongest acid and strongest base from our species list. The strongest acid is at the top, so let's go from the top to the bottom until we find our strongest acid from our species list. We see CH3COOH first, so this is our strongest acid from our species. The strongest base is from bottom to top, so let's go from bottom to top to find our strongest base. We see CN- first, so this is our strongest base. Now that we have our strongest acid and strongest base, we write a reaction between them. So we have CH3COOH plus CN-. CH3COOH is our acid, so it donates its H plus ion to CN-, producing HCN and CH3COO minus. To determine whether products or reactants are favored, remember the alphabet. A before B, P before R, and now we need to see which is higher. CH3COOH, our acid, is higher than CN minus, our base, so this reaction is product favored. Let's do this third problem. In yellow are tips to help guide us. You can pause this video and try this yourself if you would like. Aqueous sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid are mixed during a titration. First, we write the species and dissociate if needed. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH. This is a strong base because it is a group 1 hydroxide, so we can dissociate this 100% into Na plus and OH minus ions. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. This is a strong acid. It's listed above H3O plus in the data booklet, so we can dissociate this 100% into H3O plus and Cl minus ions. Remember, you can write this without the water, but H plus is not located on the data booklet, so I recommend writing it with H2O. We have aqueous states, so water will also be a species. And now that we've completed our species list, we find the strongest acid and base from our species. To find our strongest acid, we have to look from the top to the bottom, and we see H3O plus first, so this is our strongest acid. To find our strongest base, we need to look from bottom to top, and we see OH minus first, so this is our strongest base. Now we write the reaction between them. So H3O plus reacts with OH minus, our strongest acid, and our strongest base. H3O plus is our acid, so it donates its H plus ion to OH minus, producing H2O and H2O. We use the alphabet to determine if the reaction is product or reactant favored. So A before B, P before R, acids before bases, products before reactants. We need to compare an acid and base and see which is higher up on the data booklet. H3O plus is our acid, OH minus is our base, our acid is higher than our base, so the reaction is product favored. Let's do these last two problems. We only need to write the net equation. For number four, aqueous sodium carbonate is titrated with hydrobromic acid. First, you write the species and dissociate if possible. Sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. This is an ionic compound, so this would dissociate into two Na plus and CO3 minus ions. Hydrobromic acid is HBr. This is a strong acid, so it dissociates 100% into H3O plus and Br minus ions. We have aqueous states, so water will also be present. This is all the species we have, so now we find the strongest acid and strongest base from the species in our data booklet. Let's find our strongest acid. We see H3O plus first, so this is our strongest acid. And then now let's find our strongest base, which is from the bottom to the top. We see CO3 2 minus first, so this is our strongest base. Now we write the reaction between our strongest acid and strongest base. So we have CO3 2 minus reacting with H3O positive. H3O plus is the acid, so it donates its H plus ion to CO3 2 minus, producing HCO3 minus and H2O. 
However, CO3 2 minus is a polyprotein base, so its conjugate pair HCO3 minus can accept another H plus ion. So we will have another reaction in which HCO3 minus reacts with H3O plus. H3O plus donates its H plus ion, producing H2CO3 and H2O. A trick to know when something is a polyprotic base is to look at the charge. CO3 has a charge of 2 minus, so it can accept two H plus ions until it becomes neutral, so there will be two reactions. Let's look at another example. PO4 has a charge of 3 minus, so it can accept three H plus ions until it becomes neutral, meaning there will be three reactions. I have a technique that we can use if we are unsure if something is polyprotic or not. So let's look at CO3 2 minus. Its conjugate pair is HCO3 minus. Let's check if it appears on the other side. HCO3 minus does appear on the other side, so we will have another reaction. HCO3 minus's conjugate pair is H2CO3. So let's check if this appears on the other side. H2CO3 does not appear on the other side, so the reaction stops. However, this technique should not be used on H3O plus or H2O or OH minus. They are special and you can remember that since they have these gray boxes. For the fifth problem, oxalic acid is titrated with sodium hydroxide. Again, rewrite the species first in dissociated form. Oxalic acid is HOOCCOOH. This is a weak acid, so we leave it as is since it dissociates partially. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH. This is a strong base, so it dissociates 100% into Na plus and OH minus ions. And since we have aqueous states, H2O is also a species. Now that we complete our species list, we look in our data booklet and find the strongest acid and strongest base from our species. Let's find our strongest acid. We see HOOCCOOH first, so this is our strongest acid. And now let's find our strongest base. We see OH minus first, so this is our strongest base. Now we write the reaction between our strongest acid and strongest base. So we have HOOCCOOH plus OH minus. HOOCCOOH donates its H plus ion to OH minus, producing HOOCCOO minus and H2O. However, HOOCCOOH is a polyprotic acid, and that means it can donate more than one H plus ion. So its conjugate pair HOOCCOO minus can donate its H plus ion to OH minus, when it donates its H plus ion to OH minus, it produces OOCCO minus and H2O. To know if something is polyprotic or will have more than one reaction, we can use this technique on the data booklet. Let's look at oxalic acid. Its conjugate pair is HOOCCO minus, and let's see if it appears on the other side. HOOCCO minus does appear on the other side, so we will have another reaction. HOOCCO minus's conjugate pair is OOCCOO2 minus, and let's check if this appears on the other side. It does not appear on the other side, so we have no more reactions. Remember that you cannot use this technique on H3O, H2O, or OOH minus. This is what I like to call remember notes. If you understand and remember everything on this page, you should be able to find the conjugate pairs, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base, and you should be able to predict bronson lowry reactions. Check out my acids and base playlist if you need any more help on any other concepts in this unit. It's a part of the chemical equilibrium playlist. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. It's the freest and best way to help support me so I can keep the channel running. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Au revoir, brothers and sisters.